grand juries may be another. Thanks for joining us here on the studio set of Power Corrupts Again, the program that spotlights corporate, government, and judicial corruption. My special guests today are Drs. Bill Kaufman and Doug Smith, retired engineering and pathology lab professors and whistleblowers from the University of Michigan. In the last segment of Power Corrupts Again, we had been discussing the co-founding by our new Michigan governor of a company called the Sarah Inc. that specializes in development, production, marketing, and sales of a cutting edge technology known as MEMS oscillators. MEMS is an acronym for Microelectromechanical Systems, which refers to a variety of microelectromechanical components so small that they can be embedded into a silicon chip as part of an integrated circuit. These MEMS oscillators are not only extremely small, because they are also extremely accurate and highly shock resistant, they can be used for numerous purposes as advanced timing devices. Essentially, MEMS oscillators are a prime example of what is referred to as dual use technology which means that this DeSera company product has both commercial and military applications. The product can be used in nuclear missiles and smart munitions. As such, this dual use technology, uh, these products are uh, classified as regulated by the federal government with tight restrictions on the export of such kinds of patented products that could be used by a country such as China to improve their own missile technology and space programs. According to a video documentary produced by Vince Wade Multimedia called Chinese Espionage and the Michigan Election, DeSera's MEMS oscillator technology was developed at the University of Michigan, presumably with public assistance, and through federal subsidies provided to University of Michigan by DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. This is an agency of the United States Department of Defense that is responsible for the development of new military technology. Information I found at Wikipedia says that DARPA has around 240 employees overall, directly managing a budget of about 3.2 billion of our taxpayer dollars. A research backgrounder article forwarded to me by Dr. Kaufman shows that the MEMS technology developed by University of Michigan was exclusively licensed to DeSera Inc., which was formed between our new Governor Rick Snyder and University of Michigan electrical engineering professor by the name of Clark Wynn. The article stated that the license agreement between University of Michigan and DeSera provide for royalty payments, stock options, and reimbursement of patent-related expenses to the university, which means U of M has a financial interest in the successful commercialization of that MEMS technology. Now here's where it gets good, folks. Since the prime characteristic of corruption includes complication and ultimately confusion, you know, numerous of company board members being in bed with each other, with each taking the full credit for the positive outcomes and each pointing the finger at the other when the stuffing really hits the fan? The research backgrounder article points out that DeSera has partnership with several companies to market their oscillator technology to different end users. One of these companies partnered by Rick Snyder and Chuck Nguyen is called Vectron International, a subsidiary of Dover Corporation. Under the terms of their partnership, 
Nacera offers up the patented product, the MEMS oscillator technology, while Vectron markets it for a profit for use in guidance missiles and smart munitions. Now we're talking about technology that can be used as key components of telemetry systems for guiding nuclear weaponry using a wireless transmitter that streams real-time telemetry data back from smart munitions to remotely guide them to their target. We're also talking about technology for which the, in December of 2009, the United States Department of Commerce's Bureau of Industry and Security, the federal agency responsible for enforcement of dual-use export controls, classified certain oscillators like the one produced by Rick Snyder's company as subject to export controls because they fall into the numerous categories of national security. Where it gets particularly interesting and where the government plays a role in this corporate corruption is that while the federal government's Bureau of Industry and Security has export controls on this privately patented, privately owned product, created through public funding because export licenses are considered proprietary business information, there is no publicly available database to verify whether or not DeSera has obtained an export license to sell military grade oscillators in China. In July 2010, Rick Snyder's company DeSera opened a new business operation in Shenzhen, China. The company's press release touted the new venture as a state-of-the-art China application center and with the new office featuring engineers, equipment, and researchers to support sophisticated chip and module integration, high definition and 3D video technology, and radio frequency and smart grid design. Whether DeSera is actually selling the military application to their new Chinese business clients or not, their business partners at Vectron are surely selling the Sarah oscillators to military end users here in the United States and abroad. Therefore, the Sarah's concurrent sales of their oscillator technology for use in the United States missile guidance and telemetry systems, as well as for those commercial uses in China, raise legitimate questions about the export of such dual use technology to China. This is because once this technology is made available to China for one purpose, it's virtually impossible to stop China's business leaders from providing the Chinese military agencies with the opportunity to use that technology for another purpose. So much for the effective oversight of our administration's National Defense Secretary, Robert M. Gates. Speaking of our national leaders, Russian leaders like Khrushchev and Brezhnev were never invited to the White House for a state dinner, such as the recent one that took place on January 19, 2011, with President Obama entertaining Chinese President Hu Jintao. In fact, when the Russians invaded Georgia a while back, strong diplomatic protests were presented to Moscow by our national leaders. Yet for some reason, there is only silence when Tibetans and Uyghurs are murdered by the Chinese in their streets. I say the People's Republic of China is doing a super sales job in Washington promoting China the panda bear instead of China the dragon. Yet beneath the surface of this Chinese president, Hu Jintao, there lurks the powerful Chinese military. Are we so arrogant as to believe that China is westernizing its policies to adopt free market trading? Who's really in control of communist China anyway? Mightn't the president be a facade, a puppet ruler, something like the Japanese emperor was in decades of the past? Five years ago, when revelations were made to the federal authorities concerning Chinese espionage and sabotage in academe, it really was expected that the same encouragement would have been received as for as that for the ousting of the Soviet spies during the Cold War. However, instead there's been, at best, only a lukewarm concern up to now by the feds about the Chinese. In the meantime, the University of Michigan President Mary Sue Coleman and her Board of Regents in Ann Arbor continue to be working with veteran Senator Carl Levin 
and our newly elected Michigan Governor, Rick Snyder, for a round robin of financial rewards for their collective undermining of the economic and military security of America. I therefore have no doubt that Dr. Bill Kaufman and Dr. Doug Smith are entirely justified in their outspoken concerns. With that said, shall we continue with our discussion, Dr. Kaufman, Dr. Smith? Well, I think I left off uh, talking about how the uh, uh, university uses the campus police to harass us when we go on with our picket signs. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the university also uses uh, the trespass warnings as a very effective weapon against uh, whistleblowers and against protesters. Uh, what, they, what, what the university contends is that they are essentially private property and that they can uh, issue a trespass warning to anybody for any reason or no reason. And so what, they, what they've done is, is to use the trespass warning to, to if somebody, say, is a whistleblower and is, is, is saying something that they don't want to hear, uh, they just have the campus police that the person is, uh, is quote, threatening or dangerous, and then the, uh, the, well, the person... Campus police or campus Gestapo? I mean. <laughs> Good question, uh -huh. uh, but but the uh, uh, they 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 simply claim the the uh, the right to give anybody a trespass warning without even proof. I mean, they they if if you're accused, if you're if if your superior accuses you of being threatening, there's no investigation. They simply give you a trespass warning and and ban you from for life from ever returning to campus. And now there the, there are 3,300 people who are currently under a trespass warning, saying that they can never return to a university campus. Well, that kind of sounds a little bit like the self-policing that I keep talking about in all my power corrupt segments, is that whether we're talking about the government, or we're talking about General Motors, we're talking about the union, there, it seems like there's, there's a lot of good things that are set into place for self-policing and, and being able to, to work things out in a proper way. However, as you're describing, and what I know happened with Dr. Kaufman when he submits grievances to his higher levels at the administration of, of University of Michigan, what is supposed to be self-policing ends up being this hierarchy of oppression. When it's worked internally like that and without the oversight of proper oversight of government agencies and things, um, it, uh, it, it, that's where corruption comes from. Right. Well, if, if I were to work for a company like General Motors, the General Motors doesn't have its own police force. So if they decided that I was somehow threatening, they would have to call the, uh, the, the Detroit police. And then Detroit would police say, well, what evidence do you have? Well, the University of Michigan in 1992 lobbied and got their own police department. And so they don't, even, they don't have to have evidence anymore. They, ha they have police at their command. So, so the, um, uh, I, I, th I, think, I think that uh, it, it's, it's very interesting power politics that the University of Michigan can go to the state legislature and get a law written specifically for them wow. so, that, so that they can have their own police department. I mean, how, if you worked for GM, how would you like it if GM had a police department? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, um, back in the, uh, in, the 18, sorry, in the 19th century and the early uh, 20th century, you had the Pinkerton detectives. And so the large corporations, when they wanted to make sure that you know unions didn't get started, they would hire the Pinkerton t detectives to come out and crack heads. Well, essentially, we've given the university administration that same power to have Pinkerton detectives. Anything to add to that, Dr. Kaufman? I know you've personally experienced some of that. <coughs> well, <coughs> I think we have to address the issue what are we going to do about this mess? <clears throat> the University of Michigan is a public university and it should be serving the needs of the people of Michigan, the students of Michigan. And where are we going to go from here? Um, the University of Michigan tries to be as opaque as possible to cover up what's going on. <clears throat> and they have many friends who are assisting them in this matter. Okay? either overtly or covertly. Uh, we could start in off... In high places, too. Um, in very high places. Mm -hmm. uh, we could start off by demanding total financial disclosure on the part of all significant administrators at the University of Michigan. This would get down to the level of dean. We don't simply want to know what your income tax was. 
<clears throat> we want to know what property you own, what stock you own, what are all your financial con conflicts, okay? That